So, uh, it's been a great year, hasn't it? Not bad, Chris. One no, of the best, no. you think, Soaks? But, but probably, yes. Yeah, for yes. madness? I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, no one could have uh, expected that the Queen would invite us to her party and the, and the Olympics would be in London in the same year we'd be invited to both, no. Yeah. Sure. Unbelievable. And not only did she invite you to her house, she let you play on the roof. How did that happen? Well, you know, some of the lead needed replacing, so... <laughs> it was the right-fingered young chaps to, to, to start the process. Um, <laughs> Um, it happened because we were asked to play at the Jubilee and then, I don't know, there was a story of us being on the main stage and maybe somebody didn't want us down there and thought, get them out of the way. Yeah. Stick them as far away as we can get them. But it, became, up... it became the highlight, didn't it, of the night? It would seem that way. I don't remember ever having a reaction, anything like our what we got house. to that. No. In the middle of our street, our house. To be playing on the roof of Buckingham Palace is one thing, but to get that whole video projection, I <laughs> just, I bet you couldn't believe it, could you? No, there was actually an audible gasp when we turned this bit here, when we turned the flats, Buckingham Palace into a block of flats. I think people actually thought it had collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually but is it right that you've got a problem with heights as well? Because you were pretty high up there. I'm not mad on heights, no. No. When we rehearsed on the Friday, when there was no one there, I found it a lot more difficult than when there was a crowd, obviously, because the adrenaline was going and it was, you know, you weren't really thinking about where you were. You were in outer space at that point, yeah. Good. All right. And is it true as well that you uh, spoke to the Queen afterwards and you did a bit of a Tommy Cooper joke? Yeah, I did, yeah. You know, the Queen comes along, you really don't know what to say. Do you? Have you met the Queen, Chris? I've, I've actually yeah. met the Queen. Oh, yeah. what did you say to her? I said, is it true you listen to Terry's show? <laughs> and she said, um, I'm not taking over the story. She said, she said, I don't really have time to listen to the radio at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, yeah, the first thing was an old Tommy Cooper. I said to her, excuse me, Mum, are you still into football? And she said, no, not really. I said, can I have your cup final tickets then? And she said... <laughs> <laughs> Did and you really, though? It's, it's, it's on Charles, YouTube. did you witness this? It's a good story, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a great story. Oh, there we have it's the a truth. great moment. <laughs> All right. It's a great moment. Uh, well, House of Fun is one of the boys' biggest hits, of course. So tonight, we're asking how much fun you're having in your house right now. You know the drill. Send us a picture. We'll show some of the cities later if we get them. Plus, we'll have the premiere of a very special remake of the Baggy Trousers. Now, we've already spoken about your amazing year, the Jubilee, and the fact that you did the closing ceremony. So, which one of those two massive gigs were you most nervous about then, Chaz? Uh, I don't know if I was nervous. I think the whole thing was so surreal. It was a bit like walking through a marshmallow dream, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, both were different. You know, the Royal Protocol, when you're around the, the Royals, it's sort of, you know, very stiff and... You've got to be on your, on your best behaviour. Which one did you find out about first, then? The Jubilee or the Olympics? I think we found out about the Olympics first, didn't we? Yeah, the, yeah, the Olympics first. Yeah, and there was a bit of argy bargy about yeah. playing our house at yeah. both. Yeah. Queen, but I said the Queen was going to appear at both, so she wants us to, you know, we will perform at both. But the Olympics, for me, was more nerve-wracking, yeah, because we were hanging around for a long time in a sort of waiting hangar. Mm. The One Direction on a lorry next to us, and then there were <laughs> the Pet Shop Boys riding bicycles with traffic cones on their heads to the left. <laughs> it was all getting a bit overwhelming, and I had to say to Carl quickly, um, what's the first line of our house? I'd Just forgotten, I'd forgotten, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just about before, before we were unleashing ourselves in front Is of... Is that the most nervous you've ever been, do you think? I think pretty much, yeah, yeah. I mean, in front of 75 trillion billion... It was very yeah. awesome. Yeah. And we were on the back of a truck, and there was nothing to hang on to, so there was every opportunity to fall off as well, so fortunately we didn't. But you did, uh, you did. You're, you're hanging on. You have a brand-new album out? Yes, you do. Okay. Uh, now, there's been a lot of talk about the title of this album, which actually, in the end, made up the design of the album cover. Tell us about that story. Uh, well, as you can see from the cover, there's a lot, there was lots of ideas about what we should call it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to Peter Blake. He said he'd do a, a painting for us, which uh, obviously we respect him. And Peter Blake of the, uh, Sergeant yeah. Pepper. Sergeant Pepper. Yep. Worked with Paul Weller as well. So the final title is Wee Wee Cee Cee, Ya Ya Da Da. Well, it's just like, tell, go on, tell. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly, yeah, because that's all the titles that we went through. And they, you know, people in our management were saying, do you really want to show the sort of indecision that this band have? But Peter Blake said, the only <laughs> thing is, just don't tell me you've changed your mind. And, of course, we did, and there are all the changes. He said, well, I'm going to just write out all the titles and cross them out. And we ended up with Wee Wee Cee Cee, Ya Ya Da Da, which is just... You know, yes, 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 which pretty much sums us up, you know, it's about an affirmation of life, that's yeah. what we really are about, yeah. And on the new album, there's a new single, but it's a sequel, isn't it, to a song you sang many, many years ago, My Girl. Yeah, Mike Barson wrote that one, he's also written this one, I'm not sure exactly um, who My Girl 2 is, but that's his, you know, there obviously is a second uh, 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 person in his life, and, um, yeah, that's the name of the song. Let's have a look. Thank you. I've been wondering about you and the things you do. I'm in love, but you 
speed of the BPM in the charts over the last couple of decades. What does that mean for people who don't know what we're talking about? Uh, uh, beats per minute, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've always tried to keep the same energy. I mean, obviously, we write words now from the perspective of being old men, which we are, but we're trying to keep the music as lively as it was when we were younger, yes. And you've got this theory that music is slowing down, haven't you? <laughs> well, from House 120, it's gone down to about 95, down to 87. <laughs> but, but it's so lively. Is it true that you actually created an earthquake. Well, it did register, didn't it? On 1992 it was, yeah. Two is that true? It is true, it's yeah. It's very true. Yeah, Glasgow, so Glasgow Seismic Centre. Uh, one step beyond started, 36,000 fans jabbing up and down <laughs> on top of a reservoir. Seismic Centre up in Scotland. Ladies' flats uh, reverberated. <laughs> a sofa went across the room, windows cracked. And his okay, poor seismologist yeah. rang the yeah. police and said, I think it was the madness. Yeah. <laughs> they, they were sceptical. They, ske they were sceptical. So you literally made the earthquake. That's fantastic. Sure. And you do it again, 23rd of November. You start in Butlins through to the 22nd of December, 14 yeah. dates. It was 12. You finish off with two at the O2. Yeah. Not bad. No, not well, bad at all. Definitely the effects, I think, of a brilliant year we've had. I think. Well, rock and roll. Well yeah, done, yeah, my yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally different here. now, though. 33 years, by the way, madness. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever think? The sentence would be so long. The batches have almost <laughs> run out. Chris. How different is Tori now, though, to back then? Um, I mean, it's different in the sense that I can remember most of it. <laughs> I mean, when I was 18, it was pretty much a blur of whatever it is a blur of when you're I heard you were really hardcore on tour. Honestly, I heard Madness was one of, one of the hardcore tours. Uh, I, I think some people would be quite surprised by our drink rider, the size of it at times. Yeah, right. How I many mean, people have been bar. in Madness? Because there's usually seven. How many, how many ex-Madness people are watching this evening? Uh, there's only one who isn't in the band at the moment, Mark, our bass player. <laughs> But um, <laughs> people do come and go. There are so well, many. There's that... a story there. <laughs> <laughs> right, we, we've got to be we can't tell yeah, where the bodies are buried. Yeah. All right, we'll have a bit of food news yeah. now. Okay.